Let, let's see this example, for instance. Huh? Imagine that we have a given this motion, given in terms of the three components of the spatial coordinates, given in terms of the material coordinates, x, capital X, capital Y, capital Z, in terms of time. Let's compute the deformation gradient tensor. We have to do that operation. Small x, that vector, which is placed here, times the nabla, the nabla, material nabla. Since this is an open product, or tensor product, we have matri in, in mat mat matrix computing, we have to place the first vector and the transpose of the second, which is put here. And now we have row tens column, as we do in usual matrix products, and by doing that, we see that this is the F, the components of F. Okay? We see that it's something that has these components that depends on the material coordinates, so it depends on x, y, z, in that case only y, and t. Okay? Look, I would like now to obtain the spatial description of this material grade, uh, deformation tensor, grain of deformation tensor. Of course, any tensor, any entity, which is described in material coordinates can be transformed in terms of the spatial coordinates. What, how? By replacing here the inverse equation of motions. Am I changing the physics of the, proper, of the material, of the entity? No. I'm just describing mathematically them or it in terms of different coordinates. That's what we do here. Okay? So this is the inverse equation of motions here. So from that I obtain that. And I, if I replace in this y by that one, small y divided by 1 plus t, then obtain that this is the same tensor. The tensor is the same. But now it's described in terms of the spatial coordinates. OK? So that's why, being a strict in terms of, no, of, of nomenclature, I've put here a small f. Because it means that it's a grain of the formation tensor, but instead of being described in terms of the material coordinates, I now described in terms of the spatial coordinates. So this is the same. This is the same tensor. Now that described in terms of the material coordinates, that described in terms of the spatial coordinates. Look that it's specifically this component is different. OK? OK, that is for f. Now let's compute f minus 1. So I compute f minus 1 by looking to that inverse equation of motion and taking the uh, transposed spatial gradient of that. And by doing that, as is, we, we said before, just some operation, we tell that this is the expression of f minus 1, the inverse gradient of the formation tensor, which naturally will depend on, on y, x, small x, small y, small z. In particular, it takes this shape. Now I can do the product of f, in particular, f but described in material coordinates, in spatial coordinates, which is here, times the dot product, this matrix, this f minus 1. And this is a 3 times 3, times 3 times 3 matrix, so this is a 3 times 3, row times column. This row, 1 times 1, plus 2 times 0, plus 0 times 0, this gives 1. 1 to minus 2e, t divided by 1 plus t squared, plus t plus t, which gives plus 2yt divided by 1 plus t squared, 0, 0. Doing the operation, the result is that. And that result is, as it should be, 1. So this checks that the product of f and f minus 1, whenever they are described, described in the same language, in the same coordinates, is always 1. I could also have, I could also have um, written that in terms of the material coordinates, the inverse gradient of the formation tensor, it put replacing here the y in terms <coughs> of these equations, the, the, the y uh, in terms of that, and then doing the operation, and you can do it yourself, and we'll obtain that we obtain something here that would depends that depends on the capital y here, and the result anyway should be one. 